Just over a circuit of the track to go here for this win, whatever the result with Bet Angel Handicap. They're off and running. King's Eel. So you're betting on horse racing. You want to pick a winner. So which horse should you pick? Of course, you should pick the favourite. Why? Because that has the best chance of winning the race. But you may also be aware that only one third of favourites win. So why is that? And more importantly, what can you do about it? That's what we're going to discuss in this video. Please like and comment on this video. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them. And if you're interested in learning from somebody that's been doing this for over 20 years, then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you want notification of new videos as they're released. So if you're going to have a bet in a horse race, you will always find there is a lot of attention on the favourite. If you go to any of the racing channels on TV, you will see that they list all of the odds with the favourite at the top and gradually getting further and further down the list. And everybody talks about the favourite. Everybody has an opinion on it, whether it's going to win uh, or not, whether they think it's justified as a favourite. But the fact is that a favourite is a favourite. And in the grand scheme of things, if you bet on a favourite, it will win more often than any of the other horses within the race. You generally don't hear people talking about um, the eighth favourite or the twelfth favourite. There's a lot of attention on the favourite and that is reflected within the betting market. It's well known, and I can confirm that this is the case on betting exchanges as well, that there is more money bet on the favourite than any other particular runner in any particular horse race. And that is just simply because people look at the favourite and they realise that that has the best chance of winning, which is true, it generally does over the very long term. And therefore, that's probably their best chance of picking a winner. However, in the modern age, that's a little bit one dimensional in terms of the way that you think about how you can bet and win money on a particular horse race. So it's worth us exploring um, exactly what does the term favourite mean, but also why is it the case that they only win one third of the time? What is going on there? If, surely if they're the favourite, they must win more than one in three races. Um, but the fact is that is a true statistic. But also it brings us to the point where we have to identify specifically what we're doing when we're betting on a favourite. Why should we bet on a favourite? Are there good races to bet on that, uh, where, where the favourite's more likely to win or less likely to win? And exactly what are we doing when we're placing that bet on the favourite? And more importantly, um, how can we profit from the fact that a favourite only wins one third of the time? To really get a grip on this, what we need to do is to understand specifically what is the favourite um, and why does it only win one third of the time? So let's have a little look at some of the numbers to explain that phenomenon. So let's explore what a favourite is and basically what options we immediately have with it. And to do that, we're going to use uh, the Betfair betting exchange. And what you can see over here uh, behind me is basically a market that is going to be uh, run, a race that is going to be run later this evening. And on it, we have a list of runners. And the runner that is listed at the top is the favourite. Why is that the favourite? It's because it's at the shortest odds. Now, the interesting thing about decimal odds and all odds in general is that they represent the market's estimation, the chance this horse has of winning this particular race. So if we look at this particular runner and we actually do one divided by its decimal odds, this will come up with a percentage figure. And that percentage figure is the chance of the horse winning the race. So we can, if we look at the favourite in this particular race, the one right at the top of this list, and we do one divided by its odds, we will actually see that it has a better than 50% chance of winning this race. Um, that is why it's the favourite. The market has assigned it value um, on that particular basis. Now, if we go further down the list, and we can see something here priced at odds of 50, if we do one divided by 50, uh, and we do that calculation, then what we will see is that comes out at 2%. So the horse that's priced at 50, the market is saying only has a 2% chance of winning this particular race, but we can see that the favorite on this particular occasion has a more than a 50% chance of winning this particular race. But if you actually look at a market, the favorite's always listed at the top, and then it goes in descending order. And if you do that simple calculation, you will actually be able to learn 
what percentage chance the market is assigning uh, to that particular horse? What chance does this horse have of winning that particular race? That's a little shortcut that you can do um, to be able to work that out. And once you've done it once, you'll be able to do it in your head fairly quickly. Um, but now that we know that, um, sort of what options d does that give us? And, and again, it still doesn't answer this question of why do only one third of favourites win? Um, so let's have a deeper dive and a look at exactly why that is the case. So if you look at this graph behind me here, what this represents is the frequency, the distribution of the price of a favourite within a race. So we basically looked at a race and say the favourite was at evens, we basically chalked up a, a tick against evens and then plotted every single price that you could get on a favourite over tens of thousands of races and this is the graph that it throws up. And this is representing on the on one side, if you have a horse that's very highly rated uh, and it's up against horses that aren't very highly rated, it's got a great chance of winning that particular race and therefore it's at very short odds. So on one side we have horses that are heavy odds on favourites. And if we look at the graph in the other direction, we have horses that aren't. They're in competitive races and basically people can't decide if the favourite is going to win the race or not and therefore there's a lot of uncertainty, its chance of winning the race is lower, and therefore its odds are higher. And you can see there's a huge bump on one side, and that is described by the fact that about 50% of races in the UK, uh, roughly, are handicap races. And the whole idea of a handicap race is they get a whole load of horses of different abilities, assign them weights, which will basically slow them down, so that each horse has a roughly equal chance of winning the race. And if all uh, if you can't pick out a clear favourite within the race, then basically there's a lot of uncertainty. The chance of any one individual horse winning is a little bit lower and therefore its odds will be higher. So you can see that it's skewed um, because of the number of handicaps to um, that part of the, the graph. You can see that that represents that particular part of the graph. So when you look at the average price of a favourite, um, you, you can sort of see that most favourites are priced up at the higher end simply because of the number of handicaps. But there are a lot of favourites that are priced at much lower odds. But if you take all of those price points, all of the favourites, divide them by the number of races, you come up with a magical figure. And that magical figure comes out at about one third. So the chance of any one favourite winning uh, is about one third, and that is directly reflected into the odds within the market. So the average price of a favourite going off is, a, is equal to about one third probability, but you can see the distribution of it is quite sort of skewed to one end. So you don't tend to see a favourite going off, particularly with a one third chance of winning the race. Um, it's a distribution much as we can see behind us. But if you want to know why one third of favourites win the race, it's because the chance of a favourite winning varies dramatically depending upon the type of race. But if you aggregate them all together, that's the number that you come out with. So yeah, that's where that particular number comes from. But more importantly, are there things that we can do that will allow us to identify horses that are more likely to be genuine favourites? So the first thing you should look at is the stall draw, because if you have a favourite that is drawn with a low draw on a course that has a strong draw bias, a course like Beverly or Chester, for example, then it means that the horse has a much better chance of winning than if it's drawn on a wide um, stall. Now, the reason for this is pretty obvious, because if you look at a typical athletics meeting, you'll notice that the athletes have a staggered start. And the reason for that is so that they all run the same distance. That is not present on horse racing. So at certain tracks, like I've said, a Chester or a Beverly, especially on shorter races, you will find that a horse that is drawn low will tend to run a much shorter distance than a horse that is drawn wide. And as a consequence, if you have a favourite that is drawn with a low draw and likes to front run, it can take the rail straight from the start and has a much better chance of winning. Have a quick look at the form. Now that seems a bit obvious, but if you have a horse that has won last time out or came close to winning, then it possibly could be an improver. And therefore, that will help its chances in the next race. If it's continuing to get better, then it will probably have a better chance of winning the next race. Now you have to insert a couple of caveats here because you need to look at the type of race that it ran in before to make sure that you understand the context of that particular win. But horses that have won fairly recently could be improvers and are therefore likely to have a better chance of winning in the next race. 
Anybody that has ridden a horse or interacted with a horse will know that they are flighty animals. They're sort of bred to be flighty, especially the sprinters. So one of the most important aspects of what you can do just before the race has started is to actually understand how the horse is behaving. If the horse is sweating up um, or is very excitable or the jockey does not have control of the horse, then it's unlikely that the horse will run particularly well during the race. But if it's relaxed and looks comfortable, then it's very likely that everything is under control and the jockey may stand a better chance of producing that horse for a win. So if you can actually get eyes on a race, especially just before the race has started, that can give you an important clue as to how the horse is likely to behave and if that's going to improve or decrease its chances of winning. So you've probably heard of the phrase horses for courses. And if you look at all of the race courses in the UK, you will understand why, because they're all very different. Some of them are flat, some are undulating, some have big hills, some, there's many different shapes and sizes of race courses in the UK. So if you have a horse that is won over course and distance, then that's likely to improve its chance going forward. And if the trainer has decided to send the horse there from a long distance, then there's probably a reason that they've done that as well. Horses are allowed to wear equipment. They can wear cheek pieces, nose bands, visors, a whole variety of different types of equipment to help improve their capability. Now, typically equipment is introduced if a horse has a problem. So for example, the horse may be holding its head up and not looking down, and therefore they can put a nose band on, which will then mean that the horse has to pull its head down to be able to look at the course. If there's a sudden change of equipment, you may find that horse runs better in the next race. So I hope all of that has been useful for you. Give me a like if it was, and if you're interested in one particular aspect of it that perhaps you want a little bit more information on, then leave a comment. But basically what we've looked at here is why only one third of favorites win, how that's worked out within the market. We've also given you a clue there as to things that are helpful to the favorite, in other words, where you should probably back them. Um, but also where sometimes, you know, if those characteristics do not exist, then maybe you should consider placing a lay bet on them, bet on them to lose. Um, but yeah, if you look at all of this information that we've given you, that should give you a good steer in terms of what is a reasonable price, why one third of favorites lose, but also characteristics to look for when you are actually looking at a particular favorite in a particular race. Do you think that it has some of those characteristics or not? Because that will form the basis on whether you place a bet or not and what type of bet you wish to place. Now you can also trade on horse racing, which means you can profit before the race has started, regardless of who goes on to win. But if you want more information about that, you're gonna to have to watch some of my other videos. However, I hope this particular one has been of use to you.